This is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giant Sports Talk and Entertainment. Well, it's it's Miller time. Having a beer. I needed a beer. It was a long day. It's not it's not even afternoon, but it was still a long day. Well, it's sort of afternoon. What time? It's like eleven something when I'm when I'm doing this. Uh, I want to talk about the Giants and the salary cap and the Giants potentially considering trading back. So there was a press conference yesterday, and our uh, what's his name Kevin? I don't remember his last name. It's Kevin Abrams, Abrahams. I can't remember his last name, but he is the football uh, vice president of football operations, and I know the assistant general manager. And he was actually very blunt about answering questions about the Giants and free agency. And they said they kind of knew they were going to go out and spend some money, but they're saying that with the conservative estimate about the salary cap in 2022, he admits it's going to be more challenging to manage. His exact quote was 2022 could be a bit of a challenge depending on where the cap goes. Then beyond, he said, then beyond a more optimistic that nothing that we've done this year puts us in the kind of precarious position. But I always love when there's a but. There's always a but. And it's usually it's a, and usually it's a big but. Oh, that phrase is trademark not to use it outside the tradition of Ricky Bobby. Wrong button. That's what she said. Oh. Uh, but the next year could be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And and that and this is what I've been saying for a while now. And remember, we're gonna talk about the salary cap, and I know people hate it, but we're gonna talk about it. Right now, on the books for 2021, we are technically, with uh, deleting the rule of 51, we are $20 million over the salary cap. We have a total of $205 million in salaries of a cap of 185 So going by the rule of 51, we are $3.8 million under the cap. If you look at it, you got you have James Bradbury taking up seven percent of the cap. Leonard Williams taking up seven, excuse me, five, almost six percent. Uh, Saquon Barkley taking up another five. Nate Solder taking up another five, and take and uh, Sterling Shepard taking up another four percent of the cap. So right now we are going to need to trim at least twenty million dollars off the cap. <laughs> so that's gonna that's gonna be interesting during cutdown days. We have a total active player roster list right now of eighty four. So we we'll definitely be we we'll definitely be are going to trim that number down. So I'm I'm not too concerned about this year. And and to Kevin's point, it's going to be next year that is going to potentially be a hiccup. Now we have talked about this a million times, and I've I have done a chart. I I, I like using my Excel skills because. You know, one point in time, I was very good at Excel. So I broke down the contracts, car- carried over the base salaries, the signing bonuses, board cap bonuses, pro bonuses, all that kind of fun stuff. And I moved it over into an Excel spreadsheet. And again, we're looking at a total player active list of 41 players in 2022 with a rule of 51 negative cap number of 18 million. I'm, you know, the salary cap. It's probably going to go over 200. I was I was estimating it at 200 because we don't we don't know what the situation was COVID was situation with I know we have the new uh, the there's a new TV deal new revenue sharing but I conservatively estimated at 200 200 million okay right now at 41 active players were negative 18 million yeah you got Leonard Williams with a cap hit of 26 Kenny Galladay with a cap hit of 21. James Bradbury cap hit is 20. Dory Jackson's 15. Blake Martinez is 14. Logan Ryan is 10. Sterling Shepard is 10. Andrew Thomas is 8. Daniel Jones is 8. Now, the good news is we can whack 18 million of that if we get rid of Nate Solder and only have a four and a half, or excuse me, a $4 million dead cap number. So we would still, even with whacking Nate Solder, we would still be negative four million dollars under oh excuse me over the cap with only 41 active players yeah if this is not managed correctly this is going to be a really big hiccup i've been talking about this for weeks and i have been told i know nothing i am you don't know nothing about football i'm the only one ever here i i I think i'm the only youtuber that ever worked in football that's why I love that I know nothing. That's one of the reasons I'm getting out. 
because I'm tired of being criticized from people who actually know nothing. But to have Kevin come out and say, yeah, you know, it's it's not. Of course, what do you want him to say? He's not going to come out and say, yeah, it's bad. He's not going to come out and say that. But I think he was fairly honest when he came out and said, you know, I'm optimistic. Nothing we've done this year to put us in any kind of precarious situation. But next year could be a little bit of a challenge. Yes, it could be a little. If the Giants go and only win six or seven games next year. And then we look at the salary cap situation that we are in with 41 players under contract, 18 million at the rule of 51 over the cap. Dropping Nate will put us at negative $4 million in cap space with only 41 active contracts. That, if you're looking at a long-term investment for your team and you don't win this year, could be a could come out to be a massive issue because you can't really get rid of a lot of these guys, even if you wanted to. I mean, you got Leonard Williams, dead cap numbers. Leonard Williams, 34 million. Kenny Galladay, 23. Andrew Thomas, 19. Adore Jackson, 18. Logan Ryan, 11. Daniel Jones, 8. Bradbury's, 7. Blake Martinez is 5. Graham Gano is still 4. Graham's cap hit is four and a half. His salaries, I mean, his dead cap, his, his cap hit is four and a half. His dead cap number is four and a half. Same with Dexter Lawrence. His cap number is 42. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah no, 4.2 million. And his dead cap number is 4.2 million. So you're, you're not going to be finding a lot of savings up on the big area outside of Wacken, Sterling Shepard, and Nate Solder. Because you're not going to get rid of Dexter Lawrence. You're not going to get rid of Xavier McKinney. So it's a lot to think about and a lot to look at. And I was very interested that day. He was actually fairly honest about the situation. Which is refreshing. Because I got people telling me all the time, you know what your problem is? I'm like, I always tell people I got a multitude of problems. Your problem is you're too negative. No, my problem is I am too honest. If you want cuppy capes and gumdrops, this is not the channel to watch. If you want an honest outside perspective who of, of a gentleman who actually is a fan of the team, this is I am the channel to watch. 100%. Good or bad, like it or not, I'm going to tell you like it is. Now let's get into the fact that the Giants may potentially trade down. Um, it's not a bad plan because I have said this multitudes of times. Now they're saying the Giants are internally considering trading down the 11. It's a good pick 11. It really is. Now, Gettleman's never done it in eight drafts, but it's a good pick. You have an opportunity to get a quarterback, qu- quarterback, sorry, if you, if, you, if you do so, if one defaults down that way. You have the ability to potentially get a tight end. And I've said this before, at 11, you potentially have the ability to get a top five talent. And I'm not talking about top five talent in regards to the fact that someone was taking seventh, eighth or ninth. I'm talking if you take a look at the big draft board and you look through one through 32, you may be able to get one of the guys that are ranked in the top five because some of these quarterbacks should not be in the top 20 in reference to overall talent. So you may have a top five talent fall down to 11, which would allow you to gain their salary at the 11th overall pick. So if, you know, if you're willing to offer something to swap a first rounder, if someone came out and said, Hey, listen, we'll we'll give you a second or maybe something else. Or maybe you could find a team that's lower in the draft that wants to come up and give you a first rounder, swap our first and get, and get you another first rounder. I'm all for it. As long as And I think what we need to do is I wouldn't make any unnecessary trades until the start of the draft. Because you have no clue who exactly is going where. And I know it's a smokescreen with the 49ers, but the 49ers are still saying, well, they don't know who they're going to draft. Everything is open to 49ers. And that's just bullshit. Excuse me. That's just bull. The 49ers have an idea who they're going to draft. But it would make sense and it would potentially be able to give the Giants more assets and allow us 
to build more depth, that talent that we can cultivate. But like I said, 2021, even in regards to Kevin, this to me, Kevin, the assistant general manager, vice president of football operations, this is, this is the year where we got to make the run. We got to make the push this year. It's all or nothing because we have no clue what next year is going to look like in regards to the salary cap and how it's going to unfold for the Giants. So we got to do what we need to do. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you can like, you can subscribe. If you can ring that bell, you know what that means. That'd be awesome.